Uh, next speaker, uh, for the, and last speaker of this session, uh, is Professor Sundaresan, who comes from uh, Jawaharlal Nehru Center in Bangalore, India, and he's going to talk about multiferroic properties of uh, doubly ordered perovskites. So thank you, Chairman. And um, first of all, I would like to thank His Highness for creating RACCAM and then also creating the platform for all the researchers from around the world to come here and interact. And it's a very nice workshop. And this is my second time participating in this uh, uh, workshop. So next, I would like to thank uh, Professor Tony Cheatham for giving me this opportunity to come here. Uh, and also Professor Rao. And uh, I must thank Professor Rob that, you know, because of his vision and, uh, uh, and whatever he could do is uh, that we are there in, in JNC as a big materials uh, research group. And uh, so uh, today I'm going to talk about, um, uh, given more specific uh, title, that multiferroic properties and unconventional spin ordering in doubly ordered perovskite. In fact, I can just focus, you know, uh, what Tony said, and then uh, uh, Rom mentioned about it. You know how to make a new materials. Uh, one is a, a, a method to design a new material, new structure, and another is known structure. And then you play with the composition and then trans metals uh, in the periodic table, and you can uh, attain whatever uh, uh, properties you are looking for. So here. Uh, my aim was to look at uh, to get the multiferroic uh, properties uh, in materials. So, so that's what uh, our aim here. So, uh, the main important thing is here. So, I cannot use this uh, thing. So, uh, so to produce uh, the polar structure and combine with it magnetism. So, that is the idea to have both magnetism and uh, uh, fer uh, ferroelectricity. So. I'm going to talk about this uh, on, on uh, W-ordered perovskite, which is uh, sodium, yttrium, and uh, they occupy the A site. This is the uh, the perovskite structure. Well, you know, we can look at from any of the crystallographic direction, and this A cation is occupied by sodium and yttrium in the different crystallographic sites, and M and W occupies at the octahedral center of the octahedra. So, and that makes uh, instead of ABO3, it makes AA prime, BB prime. Uh, or six. So I must acknowledge those uh, research, uh, researchers and then other contributions for this work. So Ravi Shankar and Chandan Day, uh, who worked on this, uh, uh, the problems, and then Pascal Manuel and Fabio uh, were the local contact at uh, uh, ISIS neutron facility. And uh, Mike Wangbo uh, did calculations to understand the very un unusual magnetism uh, in these materials. So <coughs> this is my plan of talk. So, so I will just introduce, for the sake of students, what is multiferroic. And then the important uh, condition is to uh, break the inversion symmetry uh, due to chemical ordering. So that's how we are looking at uh, the inversion symmetry breaking uh, from chemical ordering. and then the polar structure in the uh, doubly ordered perovskite. So I will give an examples, very different examples, and then finally go into this doubly ordered perovskite. And, and then discuss about the multiferroic properties and then the unconventional spin density wave and the helical spin structure found in, these are very unusual uh, uh, in, in, in this kind of materials we observe. Uh, so multiferroics is, is basically, uh, you know, you combine two properties. One is the ferroelectricity, and then magnetism, so we know that barium titanate with the D0 ion, uh, uh, that gives you ferroelectricity typical uh, PE loop. And then for magnetism, so this is not a good example, strontium manganite, but uh, uh, still, this is the, uh, you need D, D and partially filled uh, D electrons. And uh, so we want to combine these two properties in, in single material, so, uh, so that we can have additional uh, degrees of freedom. For example, you apply magnetic field and then uh, uh, manipulate the polarization or apply electric field and uh, manipulate magnetization. So this is the aim of this. So my talk is there are various ways one can do it, but my talk is focused on the single phase materials. So we know that there are 
uh, you know, uh, the applications, uh, we can see that uh, ferroelectric random access memory in the case of ferroelectric material or the magnetic memory uh, in the case of magnetic system. But uh, if we can have uh, both properties in the single phase material, then we can have various kinds of applications. But uh, as of now, we don't have a good material which can work at uh, room temperature. So the classical example is a barium titanate. So we know that this is a simple perovskite ABO3 and A cation, and then uh, B cation sits here, and then oxygen. So uh, above the critical temperature T, uh, Tc, so it is centrosymmetric. You can see that the titanium sits at the center, whereas below Tc, that titanium is shift, uh, shifted to one of these apical oxygen, and then the symmetry is broken, inverse and symmetry. It becomes 4 mm. So one can switch between these two states. So it gives you, you can see the uh, uh, the free energy diagram, so which has a double well uh, potential here, and then the ferroelectricity uh, explains this that you know the, this titanium can move uh, above and, and below this, and in the paraelectric case you have the linear uh, PE uh, curve. So to, to if we want to combine uh, uh, ferroelectricity and magnesium uh, magnetism, there are various ways one can look at it, and in fact if you want to combine in the previous case, with the barium titanate, it's not possible. So when you introduce the electron here, you break uh, the second order Yanteller effect di uh, uh, disappears. So you cannot have ferroelectricity and magnetism in this material. So there are various other uh, possibility uh, by which we can combine ferroelectricity and magnetism. And one is the uh, bismuth ferrite using the lone pair associated with the bismuth 3 plus ion. Or you can have a structural distortion like in OMNO3, trigonal pyramidal structure. So because of the distortion, the yttrium ion is shifted that gives rise to polarization. It was also predicted that certain kind of charge ordering can give you uh, uh, polarization, but uh, it has not been really uh, proved in, in this kind of materials due to difficulties in the leakage and other uh, problems. But uh, one can also have uh, uh, ferroelectricity due to spin ordering. So uh, due to certain kind of spin ordering can break the inversion symmetry and uh, we can have ferroelectricity. So in one case that due to a cycloidal, the long range incommensurate magnetic ordering like this. So you can have uh, the inversion uh, DM interaction that can shift this oxygen and, uh, you know, uh, and that can give rise to uh, polarization. So that means it's a spin driven ferroelectricity. And another example, we can have this kind of exchange restriction mechanism where you have the ferromagnetic configuration next neighbors, and that can displace the ions and gives rise to uh, polarization at the magnetic ordering. The same way you can have a PD hybridization, and uh, the, some of the examples are, are given here. And uh, so these are the materials at the magnetic ordering, they break the inverse and symmetry and, and give you uh, ferroelectric polarization. These are called type two materials and where you have uh, the first kind where lone pair structural distortion. In all these materials, the ferroelectricity occurs at very high temperatures, close to 1000 Kelvin. And then the magnetism, uh, magnetic transition occurs low temperature. And the coupling between these two order parameter is, is very weak in those kind of materials. So we look for uh, this kind of materials, type two materials, where though the polarization is weak, but the coupling is, is strong in, in this kind of material. So we are looking for uh, this kind of uh, spin driven ferroelectric materials. So what I'm going to uh, talk about today is inversion symmetry breaking by chemical ordering. So this is how uh, you know, we sort of designed a material and, uh, with already known material. And this includes cation ordering. So it can be uh, charge ordering or in a different uh, uh, coordination environment. Uh, ca same cation in different chemical environment where octahedra versus tetrahedra and this can lead to a, a polar or pyroelectric state and then by choosing uh, proper magnetic ions so we can combine both ferroelectric or pyroelectric uh, 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 properties with magnetism so this we wrote a, 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 a perspective in APL materials about all this how chemical uh, ordering can break inverse and symmetry. So very good textbook example is the uh, diamond structure, carbon, 
where if you can replace, for example, this is the crystallographic, which is centrosymmetric. So we have a ATA site, which is carbon located at the 4 bar 3M site. And if we can replace it by zinc and sulfur, then alternatively, so you can break the inverse and symmetry, but it does not become uh, polar, but it's non central symmetry. So this is a, an idea based on that. So we approached uh, and then found uh, several system in the, in the literature, as well as we could also make a uh, few materials based on this. So simple example is the corundum structure, Al2O3, which is, uh, which is central symmetric structure. So we all know that uh, Al2O3 structure. And this can, we can have different kind of uh, uh, cation ordering type here. So we can have AB03 uh, type. So one can be, it, one can go to ilmenite structure, which is again centrosymmetric Fe TiO3. So depending on the ordering pattern. So here we have LiNbO3 structure where we have uh, uh, polar structures. Thank you. So, and then we can also have this kind of uh, A2BB prime uh, O6 uh, type ordering, which is an ordered ilmenite structure. Again, we can have here polar structure and nickel 3TO6 type ordering, and that is also a polar structure. So we can see that this kind of chemical ordering can break the inverse and symmetry, and, and it can lead to uh, uh, polarization. And this was the idea. So it is also known that this is a well-known material. Al2O3 and Fe2O3 both forms centrosymmetric structure, okay, alpha uh, Al2O3 structure. But when you mix both of the one is to one, what we end up having is a po polar structure PC21N. So although this is not a complete ordering, still there is an intermixing, but it's possible to get this kind of uh, polar structure. And people have shown that in thin film that it is possible to uh, see a polarization in this material. So what we have done, we took the askinite family, which is a mineral. Actually, askinite mineral contains more than 10 elements. But the simple example is the CATA206, which is centrosymmetric PNMA structure. So what we did, we replaced tantalum by Fe and Fe3 plus and tungsten 6 plus, and then instead of calcium, dysprosium. So we can have this kind of structure, which is a polar structure, PNA21. So we have a polar structure by combining Fe, for example, here, and we can have magnetism and then possibly uh, you know, coupling between them. So that's what we did. And then we did neutron diffraction to see, look at the uh, magnetic structure. Both Fe and tungsten are non-collinear, but it is at room temperature itself, it's, it's a polar. But unfortunately, we could not measure the polarization because we believe that this material should be pyroelectric because of this chemical ordering. That means this ordering should remain till it, it decomposes or it melts. Okay, there is no polar, non-polar uh, phase transition in this kind of materials. So, but when you look at the magnetic properties, this is the dielectric anomaly at the magnetic transition, 18 Kelvin. So you have a dielectric anomaly and then you have the change in polarization. When we say delta P because I expect some polarization in the paramagnetic state, but since we could not measure it, so I show that it's a change in polarization. Either it should contribute uh, through the uh, spin phonon coupling, or the, the magnetic structure itself can also uh, induce uh, polarization. But whatever, this is the polycrystalline sample, so but what we expect the polarization should be along the C direction of, of this crystal structure. So we have also done. Uh, chromium instead of Fe, but in chromium case, all these uh, uh, spins are collinear, so we did not see any change in polarization at Tn. So looks like that the non-collinear spin structure is, is important to induce uh, uh, change in polarization in this compound. And so now I come to the uh, uh, perovskite structure. In perovskite structure, all these type of distortion lead to always centrosymmetric, except these counteracting uh, forces like a titanium uh, or any other uh, niobium, for example, so which can lead to uh, the ferroelectric instability. So that gives you uh, ferroelectricity, ferroelectric distortion, or BiFuO3. So due to lone pair, so it can give you uh, uh, ferroelectric polarization. All other materials or uh, with a different uh, uh, kind of uh, distortion is always uh, centrosymmetric. Okay, so. We wanted to create, to combine different kind of ordering, and then to make this material as a, a, a you know a 
due to uh, chemical ordering, can we make this material uh, as a polar material? So that was the approach, and it was. We know that there are famous material like SR2 FeMO6, which is a double perovskite. When we say double perovskite, it's common that at the B site, the two different transition metals order, and in a rock salt fashion, so it is centrosymmetric, or it can order uh, like this. So uh, you can have. A, um, it's a NDSR MN3 plus, for example, here. So you can have a P4 MMM uh, kind of uh, structure, or you can have very unusual ordering, like a, la a layer type ordering, LA2, CU, SNO6 kind of uh, ordering. So this, this is what we know normally, but all of them are centrosymmetric. But when we have a doubly ordered, that means both A site and B site, we make them ordered. Like in the case of uh, the first case, P4 NMM, so again, centrosymmetric, you can see that these A cations are ordered in layered fashion, whereas the B sites are uh, in rock salt uh, manner. Whereas in this case, it is columnar uh, uh, kind of ordering. So you have this, these are the A cations, which forms a columnar ordering, and B cations remains uh, rock salt ordering. But in the third case, both are in rock salt ordering, but in all these cases, you can see that all are uh, centrosymmetric. But it is possible that, uh, that by properly uh, selecting uh, the A cations, it is possible to reduce the symmetry from P4 NMM. That means without, this is what, what we have shown here is without octahedral distortion. So the symmetry is high symmetry. But when we can uh, make different kinds of uh, rare earths, for example, or alkali metals, so we can reduce the symmetry from the high symmetry to lower symmetry P21 in the monoclinic. But there are three modes, for example, when you analyze the symmetry mode analysis, so we can decompose into uh, three modes. One is the gamma plus five and gamma one minus, okay? And both are centrosymmetric, which is non-polar. Non Whereas the third one, which is gamma five minus, which is a polar mode, where you can see the A cations, one, for example, if it is a sodium, which goes this side, A, A cations, and then A prime cations moves in the opposite side. So, but they are not equal, but gives rise to a finite polarization, whereas the octahedral rotations, they cancel out, even B, B prime movement also gives rise to a zero uh, uh, dipole movement. So only the A cation movement, which gives rise to a finite polarization, uh, in this, then this was explained uh, theoretically symmetry analysis in this paper. And uh, what we did, there was no uh, experiment actually to uh, show that whether it is uh, polar or it's a magnetoelectric or not. So, and this was first uh, reported by uh, Patrick Woodward in lanthanum and the different uh, bigger rare earth ions. And uh, the structure was reported to be P21 mon monoclinic. But uh, the, there is no experiment so uh, of ferroelectric nature. So we try to uh, understand using different lanthanum, neodymium, and terbium. We selected and look at the magnetic properties. They order at very low temperature due to manganese. But um, when we measure at, uh, uh, in the paramagnetic state, for example, at room temperature or even up to 77 Kelvin, so we don't see any PU loop or even through the uh, pun measurements. So this is. You can see the, the applied voltage is, is quite high, so still we could not see any switchable polarization. We thought it could be uh, you know, non-switchable, only pyroelectric. So, and then we wanted to see at low temperature what happens, is there any possibility uh, at the magnetic ordering temperature? So when we look at that, the magnetic ordering temperature, we can see there is a dielectric anomaly, but in all these compounds, and there is a mag magnetic capacitance, but there is no ferroelectric polarization at the magnetic ordering temperature. Okay. So then we thought, let us uh, change this A cation from lanthanum to smaller cation, like yttrium, uh, and, and then try to use different transition metals and then uh, uh, make this material and measure. But unfortunately, because of this difference, the difference between sodium and uh, yttrium 3 plus ion, the size difference is too much, and also the uh, tolerance factor is, is small. So we could not make this material at ambient pressure, and it required a high pressure to stabilize it. So these materials were synthesized at uh, 4.5 GPA at 1,000 degrees C. And this is how uh, it requires all gold, and it's very expensive, unlike uh, uh, what Ram said 
which uh, you know um, he can make it quickly without you know less expensive microwave oven but it's highly expensive and uh, but you can make it within one hour or total three hours uh, these compounds so and we need to quench this material so we have to apply pressure and then heat but before removing the pressure first we should quench the temperature room temperature and then remove the pressure then it is possible to stabilize these phases and uh, and what we get is highly distorted structure determined from neutron diffraction and you can see that mno6 octahedra and tungsten o6 octahedra and you can see this more or less is regular whereas tungsten because of this second order entrelier effect so you have a uh, you know, highly distorted octahedra but it does not contribute to the polarization but you can see that it's clearly an a type ordering where you have a sodium ion and then uh, uh, yttrium ions they form a layered structure and this leads to a kind of uh, polar structure and uh, again we measure the magnetic property at low temperatures and see nickel orders around 20 kelvin and uh, the structure is p21 like uh, lanthanum compounds but here we see a dielectric anomaly as well as change in polarization at the magnetic uh, ordering temperature and which could be uh, you know switched by, uh, by changing the electric field uh, from positive to uh, uh, negative so the in the case of manganese it is uh, surprising that uh, at low temperature uh, it also undergoes magnetic ordering around 9 kelvin but the change in polarization for example here and we could not switch even when you apply the uh, negative electric field which means the whatever the uh, uh, pyroelectric state which seems to be a single domain structure and it was possible uh, to measure this even without applying uh, an electric polling field that means there is an internal electric field present in that due to pyroelectric nature of the sample so we have done uh, the uh, neutron diffraction to find out the magnetic structure uh, in this case so this is the magnetic structure at 1.5 kelvin uh, for nickel compound and uh, it's and we could see that the, the k vector which corresponds to half zero half and and this is the magnetic structure determined uh, and you have the along the a axis it's antiferromagnetic and also along the c axis antiferromagnetic whereas along the b axis it is ferromagnetic but when we increase the temperature and close to uh, nil temperature what we see is is, is an, uh, a spin density wave structure this spin, spin density wave is very unusual so you can see sp spin density wave has only ferromagnetic component in one half and another half you have another ferromagnetic down up and down but here the near neighbor spins are you know aligned up and down so this is what i say it's an unconventional or uh, unusual magnetic structure and you can see the k vector which corresponds to 0 0.47 0 0 0.49 and uh, this is the uh, uh, neutron diffraction pattern close to uh, 20 kelvin so you can see this uh, incommensurate uh, peaks which we model and what we get is is this kind of uh, uh, incommensurate waves and which is not ferromagnetic which is conventional one but here each spins you can see neighbor near neighbors are aligned in opposite direction so just to explain this, that what is a spin density wave? A spin density wave is, is a, a combination of both cycloids, okay? Different rotation. You get clockwise and counterclockwise rotation. So both cycloids are, are, are polar structures, so which can break the inverse and symmetry. Whereas it's combination, so they have equal energy. So that gives rise to a transverse spin density wave like this. So you can see that within one half, you have ferromagnetic, and another half will be another ferromagnetic. So this combination leads to uh, 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 this kind of uh, spin density wave structure. And at, if you cool this material at low temperature, you can stabilize one of them through the electronic structure and, and uh, lattice interactions. But that's, uh, that's possible. So you can have either uh, transverse or a longitudinal spin density wave, which is observed in T TBMNO3. So TBMNO3, what you observe at high temperature is a, is a spin density wave. But as you cool uh, below this temperature, you undergo a lock-in transition and stabilize one of these kind of uh, cycloidal structure that breaks the inverse in symmetry and gives rise to polarization. So to try to understand uh, why uh, 
we have this kind of antiferromagnetic spin structure and my calculator the various exchange uh, interactions in this and you can see there are nine exchange paths in this so j a j b and uh, j a p prime and j a b and j1 j2 uh, j3 and all these things you can see that there are you know in in a layer of nickel 2 plus ions we have parallel to the ab player at is it equal to half so you have this kind of c c direction so you have com complex uh, 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 spin exchanges and that can be calculated and then tabulated here you can see which are antiferromagnetic some are ferromagnetic so obviously this leads to uh, this kind of incommensurate uh, spin structure if you don't have this kind of um, exchange interaction mixed exchange interactions so what we have is, is a collinear spin structure because the exchange energy is is minimum when you have a collinear spin structure because of this magnetic frustration it it goes undergoes to a transition to unconventional uh, spin density wave uh, uh, structures so to understand this so we start with antiferromagnetic chain along one direction for example here and then you allow to rotate so you have cycloids of opposite chirality but here instead of all of them are ferromagnetic you have antiferromagnetic up and down spins so that gives rise to an antiferromagnetic spin density wave in in nickel compound so in the case of manganese again it's we have an unusual structure so in this in this case you have a, a, a spiral kind of a helical structure so antiferromagnetic helix so again the helix normally uh, uh, an uh, ferromagnetic helix but in this case you can see the the spins are aligned in antiferromagnetically and then it's propagate along this direction so the k vector is 0.477 and then half and this is what we observe at 1.5 kelvin in the case of uh, uh, manganese so i summarize here so in the case of yttrium uh, sodium and uh, uh, nickel both of the materials are uh, pyroelectric in the paramagnetic state but below magnetic ordering temperature and they show a uh, change in polarization but in one case in the nickel case it's possible to switch the polarization whereas in the manganese we could not switch the polarization possibly because of the single domain uh, nature of this uh, pyroelectric uh, domain structure and nickel compound undergoes an unconventional antiferromagnetic spin density wave below 21 kelvin and transform to a commensurate spin structure without showing intermediate cycloid ordering normally there is an incommensurate uh, you have a commensurate structure uh, a spin density wave structure and then goes to cycloidal and then it can go to uh, a commensurate structure but we miss this cycloidal uh, phase in between in this compounds so in the m1 compound is very unusual and that exhibits antiferromagnetic helical spin structure Okay, so that thank you very much. For okay, we have uh, time for a couple of questions. Uh, Sundar, here. Yeah. yeah. Great talk. Uh, so uh, there is also similarly some suggestions with uh, with uh, Rattleson Popper phases right that you can order the right it's it's possible cations to, uh, yeah. uh, have you uh, 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 are yeah. those accessible without high pressure synthesis but it depends on what kind of ions we select yeah. so if you select again smaller ions at the si so it's maybe require high pressure right yeah yeah Okay, if not, let's thank the speaker. I didn't see anybody online. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.